The eleventh error in the Quran we'd like to look at is summarized by the statement that Pharaoh, who was a king of Egypt in 1500 BC, and Haman, who lived in 510 BC in Persia, never met each other. They lived 1,000 years apart. In the Quran in Surah story number 28 verse 38, we read as follows. Pharaoh said, O chiefs, I know not that you have an Ila, a god, other than me. So kindle or make for me a fire, O Haman, to bake bricks out of clay, and set up for me a sar, a lofty tower or palace. Here we have Pharaoh, king of Egypt, in Moses' time, speaking to Haman, who was a Persian government officer in 510 BC. Pharaoh is telling Haman to make a fire to bake bricks out of clay to build a tower. We ask the question, when did Pharaoh live? Well, if you look at your Schofield Bible, you read Exodus chapter 5, verse 1, and afterward, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh. The date at the top of the page is 1491 BC, years before Christ. Let's approximate this as 1500 years before Christ, when Pharaoh and Moses lived. We want to ask also the question, when did Haman live? Well, if you look in the Bible at the book of Esther, chapter 7, verse 1, we read, So the king and Haman came to banquet with Esther the queen. This is King Kashyashar of Persia, who had Haman as one of his government officers, came to banquet or have a meal with Esther the queen. The date at the top of the page and confirmed by history is 510 years before Christ. Let's call this approximately 500 years before Christ. We ask the question, how many years are there from Pharaoh, 1500 BC, to Haman, 500 BC? The answer is 1000 years. Pharaoh was dead 1000 years before Haman lived. This is a very big mistake in the Quran. And Egypt was about 2000 kilometers away from Persia. So Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and Haman, government officer in Persia, never met each other. Pharaoh was dead a thousand years before Haman ever lived. And you might ask the question, well, how did this mistake get into the Quran? And the answer is very simple. Muhammad knew a lot of Jewish people living in Arabia, and the Jewish people told Muhammad about Bible characters. The Jewish people told Muhammad that Pharaoh was a very bad king because he killed a lot of Jews, Jewish baby boys, and persecuted the Israelites. The Jews told Muhammad that Haman was a very bad person because he plotted to destroy the entire Jewish nation of people in Persia. Now, the problem here is that Muhammad and the Arabs did not have a dating system to date the events of ancient history. The Arabs in Muhammad's time did not have libraries. That's why when they attacked Persia and other countries, they burnt the libraries of Persia and Egypt and elsewhere, destroying many priceless, precious documents. So because they never had a dating system to date the events of ancient history, Muhammad guessed and presumed that Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and Haman, government officer in Persia, both lived together. And this conversation was made up when it never took place. This is a complete the false statement. It's a historical blunder. Muhammad didn't understand the error of Pharaoh being dead a thousand years before Haman ever lived. This proves four things. It proves, number one, that the Quran is a false, fake, lying book with such a historical mistake as this. It proves Muhammad is a false, fake, lying prophet. It proves that Allah is a false god. And it proves that Islam is a false religion and we can confidently reject these as deceiving religions and deceiving prophet and deceiving book. The twelfth problem in the Quran that we've looked at is summarized by the statement that Moses, who lived in 1500 BC, and the Samaritans, who lived in 700 BC, never met each other. They lived 800 years apart. This is a, another historical mistake in Quran Surah Taha 20, verse number 95. We read here, Moses said... And what is the matter with you, O Samiri? Why did you do so? Here we have Moses asking the Samiri, Why did you build the golden calf? Well, the problem is that when Moses came down from getting the Ten Commandments, he found the Israelites worshipping a golden calf. It was certainly not the Samiri or Samaritans who built the golden calf, but it was Israelites. 
So who are the Sumeri? Well, if you remember in 721 before Christ, the Assyrians came and attacked the northern kingdom of Israel, killed many Israelites, took them captive, and made many of the Israelites marry people from other nations. These children born to this mixture of racial marriage between Israelites and other nations, the children were known as Samaritans. The Samaritan race only came into existence around 700 before Christ. The Samaritans did not exist in Moses' time in 1500 BC. But the Quran, once again, because Muhammad never had a dating system to date the events of ancient history, Muhammad guessed that Moses and the Sumeri or the Samaritans both lived at the same time. This is a historical blunder. This proves four things. It proves the Quran is a false book. It proves Muhammad is a false prophet. It proves Allah is a false god. And it proves Islam is a false religion. And we can reject these as deceiving books and prophets. The thirteenth problem with the Quran we'd like to consider is summarised by the true statement that all fruit do not come in pairs of male and female. There are no male or female apples or oranges. In the Quran, Surah Thunder, Surah number 13, verse 3, we read, He it is who spread out the earth and placed therein firm hills and flowing streams, and of all fruits he placed therein two spouses, male and female. So the Quran tells us that of all fruits, Allah has created male and female. I would like to ask the question to people who believe the Quran, have you ever seen Mr. Banana and Mrs. Banana? Can you get for me Mr. Apple and Mrs. Apple? Please show me Mr. Watermelon and Mrs. Watermelon. Have you ever seen Mr. Grape and Mrs. Grape? No, there's no such thing. Fruit do not have gender or sex. This is a serious mistake in the Quran. Muhammad guessed, but he guessed wrong. Some trees might have male and female, but it's talking about fruits, not trees. Of all fruits, he placed them in two spouses. This mistake proves the Quran's a false book, Muhammad's a false prophet, Allah's a false god, and Islam's a false religion, and you can reject these with confidence. The fourteenth problem with the Quran is summarized by the true statement, it is not safe to eat any sea creature, as Quran Surah 5 verse 96 claims, because some are poisonous, such as the box jellyfish. The Bible, on the other hand, distinguishes between edible fish that you can eat, which have fins and scales, compared to unclean fish without fins and scales. Leviticus 11 verses 9 to 12. But in the Quran we read, Surah 5 verse 96, Lawful or halal to you is what you catch from the sea, and the sustenance or nourishment it provides a wholesome food for you and for the seafarer or sailor. So the Quran is telling us here that it's lawful and halal to eat what you catch from the sea. Let's imagine you're out and you catch a box jellyfish. If you believe the Quran to be true, would you be quite happy to eat the box jellyfish? The problem is that if you look at Wikipedia, there are about 1,200 species of poisonous fish. If you eat them, you're dead. If you touch a box jellyfish, you are very likely to be dead in five minutes. If you eat a box jellyfish, you are dead less than five minutes. There are many species of poisonous fish in the sea that Muhammad knew nothing about. He guessed that it was okay to eat all fish in the sea, but it's not. It's very dangerous. Maybe we should get the mullahs and the Islamic leaders to come and eat box jellyfish to see if they are happy to practice the Quran. The Quran is a deadly book because if you eat these fish, it'll kill you according to recommendations in the Quran. This proves the Quran is a false, fake, lying book. It proves Muhammad is a false, fake, lying prophet. It proves Allah is a false, fake, lying God, not the true God. And it proves Islam is a false, fake, lying religion, which can be all rejected with confidence. The fifteenth problem with the Quran we'd like to look at is summarized by the true statement semen or male reproductive fluid sperm does not come from between the backbone and the ribs as surah al tariq 86 verses 5 to 7 tells us he is created from a water gushing forth proceeding from between the backbone and ribs well people in muhammad's time asked well where does semen come from they didn't know but in the quran muhammad guessed that semen comes from between the backbone and the ribs. Now, if you look at your backbone and your ribs, you will find that the testicles are about 30 to 35 centimetres lower down 
from a line drawn from the base of the spine to the base of the ribs. Muhammad guessed, but he guessed wrong. The semen does not come from between the backbone and the ribs. This is a biological mistake. And it proves that Quran is a false book, Muhammad's a false prophet, Allah's a false god, and Islam's a false religion, which can all be rejected with confidence. The sixteenth problem in the Quran is summarized by the statement the sun does not float in an orbit, earth and the moon do. Surah Yasin, chapter number thirty six, verse forty and twenty one, verse thirty three. It is not for the sun to overtake the moon, nor does the night outstrip the day. They all float each in an orbit. Well, it's correct to say that the moon floats in an orbit, but it's wrong to say the sun floats in an orbit. If the Quran said the earth and the moon float in an orbit, that'd be good, but it says the sun and the moon. It looks like the sun and the moon move in an orbit, but it's the moon orbiting earth and the earth orbiting the sun. That would have been a more correct statement to make. This mistake proves the Quran's a false book, Muhammad's a false prophet, Allah's a false god, and Islam's a false religion, which can be rejected with confidence. The seventeenth problem with the Quran that we look at is summarized by the true statement, the moon does not follow the sun, but is in a different orbit. Surah Sun, 91 verses 1 and 2, where we read, By the moon as it follows the sun. The moon follows earth, is the more correct statement to make. And this proves the Quran's a false book, Muhammad's a false prophet, Allah's a false god, and Islam's a false religion, which we can reject with confidence. The eighteenth problem with the Quran is summarized by the true statement, King Solomon of Israel did not die in the seven years building his temple, as the Quran says, but he ruled for forty years. This is stated in 1 Kings 11 verse 42 and 1 Kings 6 verse 38. But in the Quran, Surah 34 verse 14, we read, When we, Allah, decreed Solomon's death, they, that is, jinn, building his temple, did not know that he was dead until they saw a worm eating away his staff or his walking stick. When his corpse fell down, the jinn realized he was dead. Well, the Quran is telling us that Solomon was standing, supervising or watching the jinn build his temple. Well, first mistake is that jinn did not build Solomon's temple. It was men, workers. About 153,000 built the temple. The second mistake here is it says that when Allah decreed Solomon's death, Solomon stayed standing up for a period of time as long as it would take until a worm ate away his staff. And then when the worm ate the staff, his corpse fell down and the jinn realized he was dead. And so the jinn realized that they'd been working to build the temple, thinking that Solomon was supervising them, when in reality Solomon was dead, according to the Quran. Now, the problem here is that when a person dies, everybody falls down. Nobody dies and remains standing. This is completely false and contrary to universal experience in human history. Everyone who dies falls over. But why did Solomon not fall over when he died? And another mistake in this passage is talking about how long he stayed standing up. The Quran says he stayed standing up in a state of death until a worm ate away his staff. Now, how long would it take a worm to eat away a walking stick or a staff? It could take 20, 30, 40 years. So the Quran is suggesting to us that Solomon remained dead, standing up for 20, 30, 40 years, and nobody knew anything about it. Nobody had the slightest thought that Solomon was dead. But today we know when a body dies, it decomposes and it begins to give off a bad smell. Did nobody notice the bad smell that was coming from Solomon's dead body? Did nobody notice it strange that Solomon never ate food for 20 to 40 years? Did no one think it strange that Solomon never drank any water for 20 to 30 years? Did no one think it strange that Solomon stayed standing up for 20 to 30, 40 years and never went to sleep for that period of time? No, the whole story is completely false. It's contrary to how life is arranged. Everyone who dies falls down. And why did nobody notice that Solomon had died? The story is wrong in every respect and proves the Quran is a false, fake, lying book. It proves that Muhammad is a false, fake, lying prophet. It proves Allah is a false, fake, lying God. And it proves Islam is a false, fake, lying religion. And these four can be rejected with confidence and the world will be a better place.